We are starting with uh, MP Helen for the first six minutes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cross, for your uh, statement, and thank you for being here. Um, as you had no noted, um, uh, the, the senior you, deputy governor of the Bank of Canada, uh, Ms. Rogers, uh, said our productivity today is like is in a break glass emergency state. GDP per capita has declined last six quarters. In fact, GDP per capita is lower now than it was back in 2018. Uh, you recently also wrote about how bad productivity is. It's worse than it was back in the 1930s when the Great Depression was happening. And as you noted as well, the GDP per person, um, we will be, Canada will be uh, absolute last in growth when it comes to productivity until 2060. You also made mention of these experts who have been pro-carbon tax and in your uh, recent statements you've said how the carbon tax is one of those factors that have affected um, the productivity issues uh, after eight years of this government. Uh, can you expand a little bit more uh, about what your message would be to those 200 experts, uh, experts that are pro-carbon tax and how bad the carbon tax is for the productivity issues and how there's a link between the two? Sure. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, first of all, I'd emphasize that the um, productivity isn't worse in the 1930s. We'd be living in huts if that was the case. Um, uh, what I said was GDP growth over the last decade has been the worst since the 1930s. Um, but it's it's still true what Rogers said that, and I'm glad Rogers made the point. It's, I don't think people realize how extraordinary it is for a deputy governor of the, of the Bank of Canada to declare our productivity a, an emergency. Uh, productivity is not something the Bank of Canada directly has a responsibility for. Their 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 only mandate. Uh, or sh mandates, I should say, are, are to keep inflation at its target and maintain financial stability. Obviously, the banks feel very strongly that our low productivity is a threat to keeping inflation under control. Uh, I'll elaborate on that, that, uh, uh, for example, um, wage growth is, is 4 percent these days. The, the Bank of Canada yesterday in its monetary policy report discussed how wage increases of 4% uh, can only be non-inflationary, can only be consistent with a 2% target if you have productivity growth. We're having that in the U.S. Uh, I think the U.S. demonstrates the benefits of a society where you have strong productivity growth. You can have, uh, due to high rates of investment, you can have uh, high weights of, of um, income increases and maintain low inflation. Uh, obviously, the carbon tax is one variable that's going to complicate achieving low inflation. If you have uh, energy prices rising, that means there's going to be more pressure in other sectors of the economy to lower inflation. Uh, and that's one reason why. I mean, if you compare the, the behavior of the Canadian and U.S. economies these days, uh, the U.S. economy is ripping. I mean, it's, it's growing, if anything, much too fast. Um, but GDP growth is solid. They added 300,000 jobs in the most recent month. Um, you know, the only question in the U.S. these days is whether the Federal Reserve Board will uh, have to postpone cutting interest rates because of it. You look at Canada, uh, our GDP growth over the last uh, couple of quarters has been essentially zero. It would be a decline on a per capita basis. We added no jobs in the most recent month while the U.S. was adding 300,000. So uh, you can see right away that our, our stock market is lagging substantially behind the U.S. market. So a lot of this reflects that, uh, and again, I, you have to look at over the last decade, the U.S. increasing business investment over 30 percent, ours dropping over 20 percent. That, that 50 percent gap is extraordinary. We have never seen something like that. Absolutely. This is why the Bank of Canada is saying, break the glass. Yeah, I, I just yeah. wanted to get one more question, yeah. and thank sure. you. I don't mean to cut you off. Uh, I wanted to know what your um, thoughts are on the impact of, of the ta higher taxes like the carbon tax and economic uncertainty um, on productivity. And what does that say about the living standards for Canadians? How does that have an impact on the living standards of Canadians? And how are they experiencing those living standards today? 
I don't know how much. I've never seen a study of how quantifying the impact of the carbon tax on investment. I mean, the PBO has quantified its impact on household incomes and GDP and found it overall to be negative. I haven't directly seen a, a study of investment. I think the consensus in the economics profession would be that it's a wide range of variables, uncertainties about regulation, about how hard it is to get projects going forward. Uh, obviously, some projects have just outright been nixed, uh, including pipelines off of BC, uh, the the, um, the uh, Trans-Canada Eastern Pipeline, uh, outright just saying that LNG projects on the East Coast are not going ahead. I mean, there's been over and above uncertainty, there's just been an outright refu refusal to proceed especially with projects in the resource sector and within that especially in oil and gas. So uh, I think that's had a much more negative impact on, pro on sorry, investment in this country. Okay. We have limited time, but I want to go to MP Wiley.